Hi everyone, this lesson is on the signs and symptoms of pericarditis. If you want more information on pericarditis, including how it's diagnosed and treated, please check out my full lesson on this topic. Before we get into the signs and symptoms, let's talk about what pericarditis is. Pericarditis is a condition involving inflammation of the pericardium. The pericardium is the sac that surrounds the heart. So it is an inflammation of the pericardial sac. So the pericardial sac, if we look in this image here, it surrounds the heart and it has pericardial fluid within the sac. So it is aligning that layers the heart and there is pericardial fluid there to allow lubrication for the heart to beat within the sac. Now, what are some of the causes of pericarditis? So by far, some of the most common are going to be idiopathic causes, which means that the cause itself is not entirely known. However, some causes that are known include viral infections. So you can think of Coxsackie viruses as potential viral infections that can cause pericarditis. Some other ones include parvovirus B19. A myocardial infarction or heart attack can also lead to pericarditis, both in the acute stage of a myocardial infarction. So within the first 24 hours of a heart attack, this can lead to pericarditis. And also after a heart attack has concluded for upwards of weeks to months so pericarditis can occur even weeks or months after a myocardial infarction, and this is what we would call Dressler syndrome. We can also see pericarditis from uremia, so increased levels of urea in the blood. This can be from chronic kidney disease. Certain cancers can also cause pericarditis, including Hodgkin's lymphoma. Radiation can also lead to pericarditis. We can also see some medications causing pericarditis, and then some autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis can also lead to pericarditis as well. If you want more information, again, please check out my full lesson on this topic. But the topic of this lesson is that pericarditis, or this inflammation of the pericardial sac, causes a variety of signs and symptoms, and we're gonna talk about those in the upcoming slides. Let's first talk about the main symptom that can occur with pericarditis, and that is chest pain. So this chest pain is actually going to be the most common symptom in pericarditis. This chest pain is going to affect the retrosternal area and or the left-sided sternal area. So if we look in this image here, here's the sternum. It's going to be oftentimes behind the sternum, so retrosternal, or to the left. So this is, again, where the heart would be located. So the heart's going to deviate to the left in majority of patients. So you can have a little bit of pain in that area as well. The pain's often going to be severe, and this pain may radiate to the neck and to the arm. Now there are particular characteristics with regards to this chest pain, including pain being pleuritic in nature. So what does that mean? Pleuritic actually means that the pain gets worse with inhalation or inspiration. So when you take a deep breath in, you can imagine that if you take a deep breath in, your lungs expand and can push onto the pericardium. If it's inflamed, that can lead to pain. So this is why we can see pleuritic chest pain in pericarditis. It's also positional, so it's actually worsened when the patient's lying down flat. So you can imagine that if you are lying down flat, gravity is going to pull down onto the heart. It's going to cause pressure onto the pericardial sac, causing some increased pain. And along with this, if a patient sits up and leans forward, that can reduce some of the pressure onto the pericardium, improving the pain. The pain can also be worsened with coughing and swallowing. So again, you can imagine if you're coughing, it can cause some irritation on the pericardium, causing more pain. And this is why we see certain characteristic findings with regards to the chest pain in pericarditis. So these characteristics are very important to take away from this slide. And then it's also important to note that the chest pain may not be present. So depending on the cause of the chest pain, if it is, for instance, caused by rheumatoid arthritis, it may be less likely to cause chest pain. So although this is going to be the most common symptom, it may not always be present. So I also want to mention that here as well. Now, there are two other important clinical findings with regards to pericarditis that the patient may not be able to assess themselves, but a clinician will be able to assess these. One of them is what we call a friction rub. So a friction rub or a pericardial friction rub, and this is going to be heard by auscultation. So when a physician takes their stethoscope and checks to listen to the heart sounds, they may hear a rub, and that's going to be caused by that inflamed pericardium. So although this is going to be a classic clinical finding, it may not be present. So it can be present in some patients, but in others, it may not be present. If this is present, if a clinician does hear a friction rub, this is very indicative of pericarditis. It's very, very specific to pericarditis. 
And there are ECG changes that also occur with pericarditis. So this is going to be more for when clinicians and healthcare providers look at an ECG, what can be noted. And this is going to be a very brief overview of the ECG changes in pericarditis. If you want more information, please check out my lesson on ECG changes and heart disease. So what's going to be found with regards to pericarditis is diffuse ST elevation. So the ST segment, which is here, you can see it's elevated compared to the other segments and it's diffuse. It's found in multiple leads. So that is going to be very characteristic with regards to pericarditis. And then the PR segment, which is depressed here, as you can note here. So this is also another characteristic finding with regards to ECG changes in pericarditis. So again, these two are going to be more for the clinical findings. And we're going to talk more about the symptoms that a patient experiences in the next upcoming slides. But I wanted to mention them here because those three findings, the chest pain that's often pleuritic and positional, the friction rub that's heard by auscultation, and the ECG changes are the classic or diagnostic triad for pericarditis. So I wanted to mention them here. Some other important signs and symptoms of pericarditis include fever. So oftentimes it's going to be a mild or low grade fever. And this is due to inflammation of the pericardium. So you can imagine if there's a part of an organ that's inflamed, this can cause a fever to mount. And this could also be related to a viral infection that is causing the pericarditis as well. We can also see fatigue occurring. So feeling tired and fatigue can be common with pericarditis. Malaise can also be another symptom that patients can experience. Malaise is a general feeling of being unwell. So it's very common to feel unwell when ill or when in a state of inflammation. Arrhythmias can also occur in some patients with pericarditis. You can imagine that if the pericardium is inflamed, this may cause some issues with the rhythm of the heart. So heart palpitations can occur. So again, this can occur in some cases, but not always. And it's important to note that the patient that has pericarditis oftentimes will recover within one to three weeks, but they can go on to having complications from the pericarditis. And we're going to talk about those later on in this lesson. Because there are a variety of underlying causes of pericarditis, and most often a lot of them are going to be related to viral infections, signs and symptoms related to the underlying cause, especially viral infections, can be also noted in patients with pericarditis as well. So one is going to be a cough. So cough can occur in patients with pericarditis. It's going to be non-productive or a dry cough. And again, it's going to be related to some infection or some underlying cause that may be noted. Diarrhea can also be noted as well in some patients. So they may have watery diarrhea and this can be due to a viral infection. So if a patient is having some other associated symptoms like diarrhea, they may have a viral infection and that viral infection may lead to pericarditis. They may have some of these symptoms of an underlying cause before they have an onset of pericarditis. So it's important to make note of these symptoms as well. And we mentioned a very large list of causes of pericarditis, including myocardial infarction and some autoimmune conditions. So there are going to be other signs and symptoms that may be related to the underlying cause, including a longstanding history of anginal chest pain that may be indicative of coronary artery disease. And there may be some signs and symptoms of an autoimmune condition like rheumatoid arthritis, which can also cause or lead to pericarditis. So there are going to be a variety of other signs and symptoms that can be associated with pericarditis. And oftentimes pericarditis can resolve, but it may cause complications in some patients. And these complications include the following, pericardial effusion. So pericardial effusion is where in the sac that we talked about before, the pericardial sac, more and more fluid accumulates. And that will lead to the heart having issues pumping against that increased fluid within the pericardial sac. So the space between the heart and the pericardial sac becomes fluid filled. So there's oftentimes a little bit of fluid there for lubricant, but in a pericardial fusion due to inflammation, there can be more fluid that accumulates within the sac. So this can cause issues with the heart beating. So it can cause some issues with vital signs and it can cause dyspnea or shortness of breath. And this leads us into the next complication, which is a cardiac tamponade or tamponade. So a cardiac tamponade may actually occur in up to 15% of patients with pericarditis, and it leads to particular clinical findings. In textbook clinical findings of cardiac tamponade is Beck's triad, which is hypotension, so low blood pressure, distended jugular veins, and muffled heart sounds. So those are going to be the triad or the classic triad of a cardiac tamponade. So that's when there's a lot of fluid within the pericardial sac, so much so that the heart has difficulty receiving blood and pumping blood. So this can cause a lot of issues with patients. So this can lead to tachycardia, so an increased heart rate, tachypnea, increased respiration rate, and dyspnea, which is shortness of breath. So it can cause many different issues. 
So if you want to learn more about these complications, please check out my lessons on these topics. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.